Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a push pin or a thumbtack type thing in Adobe Illustrator. I noticed the other day when I needed to, to find one that uh, it's kind of difficult to find um, a, a vector version out there on you know the various uh, vector websites that there are. So um, in this case, it's a lot easier just to make your own, and I'm going to show you how. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that you're going to want to do is uh, set up your rulers and you can press control R to toggle your rulers on and off and what you'll do is you'll move a guide to the middle of your page and this is important because we're going to be using our 3D revolve filter so um, <clears throat> and I'll explain that in a little bit but uh, then grab your pen tool and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making a shape it doesn't have to be real perfect but it should be the shape that you kind of want and uh, what, and I'll show you what shape that we do want. It, it looks like this. So what we'll do is we'll click a point right on this line, and we'll go out a little ways, and we'll hold down shift to make sure that it stays level, and we'll click again. We're going to make a little rounded edge here, so we'll click out here a little ways, and uh, hold down shift, and just kind of drag it until it's rounded a little bit like that. You're going to want to set your outline so that you can see what you're drawing. I apparently have mine set to a gradient right now. Um, and that's not what we want. We want our outline set to black for now, or any other color. Just so you can see what you're doing, though, pretty much. Um, then what we'll do is, somewhere right in here, maybe, we'll just make another point and connect it so that it makes a shape that looks kind of like that. And we'll hold down Shift, and we'll go straight down from there, about like that. And we'll go straight out from there, holding Shift. Make another point, and we'll kind of round this edge a little bit, and come down to make that sort of a shape, and then we're going to come right back to where we started on that line, just farther down, and we're going to hold down shift to make a level line like that. As you can see, um, this isn't quite as exact as I want it, so I'm going to move it. Just to, I'm going to just going to take my direct select tool and highlight the points that I want to kind of change. And I'm just going to drag them in a little bit so that this edge meets up with the other edge. And I'll make sure my guides are locked, so I'll go to View, down to Guides, Lock Guides, and I'll just drag these points in until I'm happy with where they are. Hopefully you kind of already have used the pin tool a little bit before and this is just kind of extra. Anyway, um, that shape's pretty good. And once you once you get your shape about like that, um, I'm just gonna just, actually I'll just toggle my guides off. I'll press control uh, colon and toggle those guides off. Uh, once you get your shape it looks about like this, um, what we will do is we'll select our shape. And we'll go up to Effect, 3D, and we'll go to Revolve. <clears throat> and uh, you can turn on your preview if you want. Um, it's going to end up making a shape kind of like that. And as you can see, mine's, uh, mine's kind of fat, so I'm going to go ahead and cancel this for now. And I'm going to go ahead and just take one of these sides and drag it in, because I don't want my push pin to be that fat. And I think I don't want it to be quite that long either, so about like that maybe. So then we'll select it again, go up to Effect, 3D, Evolve, Preview, and that's looking a little bit better. Um, and I can kind of change that a little bit later too, because you you can uh, you can scale it after you, after you do this step. So uh, the points that I've chosen on here to uh, for for the for the angle and all that is uh, are a few angles that I think w look pretty good. Um, and it is negative 38 degrees at the top there. Negative 28 and 38. And then we'll leave the rest the same. Um, down here you'll see some settings which are kind of come in handy. You can kind of change the light settings to wherever you want the light to be coming from in your picture. And when, um, oh, and if you don't see those, there's a little button here that says more options options and that'll toggle that on and off. And then we'll press OK. OK, um, now is a good time to change the color if you want. You can just ch uh, get the stroke um, 
color any color that you want so you can either double click on that or you can go up to your swatches and uh, pick whatever color you want. I'll just double click on my color here and we'll make a kind of a nice green color um, there. So uh, let's make it a little lighter. There we go. I like that. And as, uh, as I was saying, it might still be a little bit too thick, so we'll just drag it in a little bit. And that looks pretty good. And as you can see, we already have the top of our push pin. Okay. Uh, the next thing that we're going to do is um, make the pin part of it. And uh, this is pretty simple. We take our pin tool again, and we'll make a shape. It's, uh, and actually, why don't we go ahead and toggle our guides back on, because uh, if you want a pointed shape, your first point has to end up in, the, in line with your second point. So we have our first point, we'll hold down shift, make a second point out that way, and then our last point has to be in line with that first point vertically. So it'll look kind of like that. Then you can go ahead and toggle the guides off again if you want. And uh, I always like to make the stroke on these uh, about 0.5 so you can go up to the top there and go to stroke and do 0.5 or you can open up your strokes palette and go to 0.5 that will be under window and what we'll do is we'll simply just apply um, that 3D revolve to <clears throat> to this as well but let's go ahead and go to either revolve here or go ahead and go back to 3D and revolve here and not just apply the same revolve because what we're going to want to do is add a few more light points and you just click this uh, add light point button in the middle here and what we'll do is we'll just set those up strategically around the pin about like that is what I think looks pretty good and then we'll press OK and we'll use the same settings as the pin uh, for the angles and all that <clears throat> as we did for the top OK, now we'll do something like this and uh, as you can see, that's a little bit too wide as well, so I'm just going to drag that in until it gets to a shape that I kind of like. I'm going to change the color to black. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go ahead and make it about 75% uh, gray, just to make it look kind of metallic. And then I'll go ahead and drag it into the area that I kind of want it. And just arrow it over a little bit until it's kind of centered in there. And then what we'll do is we'll move it to back so we can go to Object, <clears throat> transform, uh, excuse me, object arrange, um, send to back. And then I'll put it in the back. And now you pretty much have your push pin. Um, what we'll do is we can group these and we can kind of shrink it down just so it's. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and leave it big just so you guys can see it really well. Because what we'll do is we'll go, we'll open up our Pathfinder, which if you go to Window, down to Pathfinder, and open it, it'll open up this Pathfinder here. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll make sure that we have our object uh, selected that we, we have now grouped. And we'll go up to Object, and we'll go to Expand Appearance. And uh, now you'll see that it has completely expanded the appearance and given it um, a lot of points around the whole thing to kind of <coughs> um, make it more of <coughs> an outlined object. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll go to our Pathfinder that we just opened and we'll click on this Unite button. Actually, why don't we go ahead and uh, copy this, copy and paste first. So we'll do Copy, uh, Control V, Control, uh, Control C, Control V to make a copy of it. The reason that we do this is because I'm actually working on a shadow right now for our push pin, and we want to keep our push pin. So <clears throat> what we'll do is we'll make a copy of that, and we'll go ahead and now we'll press the Unite button and it should make a complete outline of this whole pin and kind of flatten it down <clears throat> and as you can see it worked so what we'll do now is we'll choose our color and we'll make it black since it will be a shadow we'll shrink it down a little bit pretend like the angle of the lights making the shadow about that size and maybe we'll you can either leave it just like that, or um, you can select it and maybe make it 75% black, or um, a, a nice gradient will, will work pretty well here too. Um, and what we'll do is select our gradient and uh, click on it, and it'll make this nice gradient, and you can 
choose your gradient tool over here and kind of change the settings of it if you want. But I think that looks pretty good. Um, it might be a little bit too soft on the edge there, so maybe what I'll do is I'll do something like this. And that looks pretty good. <clears throat> and that's pretty much it. Uh, so now you have your push pin. It's got this nice shadow. You can kind of distort the shadow if you want just by, you know, dragging in the sides or something like that and warping a little bit. Uh, just do whatever you think looks good, pretty much. Something like that looks pretty good. Okay, um, and like I said, uh, you have your push pin. Uh, you didn't have to pay anything for it. And you can uh, save it, put it on your desktop, and reuse it over and over again. So um, I hope you learned something. Uh, please follow me on my on my blog, subscribe, and uh, follow me on Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff. Thanks again.